Last year, I was so delighted that Jessica Sant and Ranga Muva Varira presented on the amazing 10 plus year DevOps journey at Comcast. Jonathan Moore, their chief software architect and senior fellow, was famously absent because of a famous Ultimate Frisbee accident. Rumor has it, it began with him saying, let me show you how it's done, which then landed him in the hospital. <laughs> so you may have noticed that the title of chief architect appears four times in the plenary keynote session talks this year. I am endlessly fascinated by this because I think the role of the chief architect can dictate so much of the structure of how teams work, hopefully for the better. And I'm so delighted that this year, John Moore will talk about how he views the role of architecture in large complex organizations and how it's manifested in the daily work of the 9,000 plus engineers inside of Comcast. I'm also incredibly excited that Jonathan will be presenting with another longtime friend within the DevOps enterprise community, Michael Winslow, who was just recently promoted to become a senior director of engineering. Michael is now leading the teams responsible for the technology behind the X1 entertainment experience across mobile, web, and television. Here's Jonathan and Michael. Oh, hey, John, is that you? What are you doing there? Oh, hey, Michael. Uh, well, I'm, I'm ripping up these railroad tracks. You're ripping up railroad tracks. You might have well, asked yeah. why. Uh, sure. You know how the railroad tracks that are coming into town uh, on one side of town are a different width from the railroad tracks coming in on the other side of town? Sure do. Well, the railroad companies are planning to relay those tracks so that the widths match up. Yeah, I heard about that. I think it's great. Now people don't have to get off of one train, lug all their baggage to another and get on another. They could just ride right through. Sounds like it works out for everybody. Well, it doesn't work out well for me. I own a hotel here in town, and I sure liked having people have to stop and stay overnight while they were changing trains. Oh, well, I guess change doesn't always work for everybody, does it? You know, it's funny. I'm breaking character here, but this is a reminder of what we go through in the technology field when ch change is introduced. So, and that's pretty much what our talk is, here is about today. Uh, but John, one thing about this talk is I don't want you to be uh, executive the way that you are, right? I need you to go back and I need you to put your engineering hat on and really treat things like an engineer. Well, if you say so. Wait, I didn't mean an actual, you have an engineering hat? All right, fine. Yeah, totally. Look, looks like it works for me. As a matter of fact, I'll do it with you. All right, let's do this. Hi, everyone. I'm John Moore. I'm Chief Software Architect at Comcast Cable, um, and I do, in fact, have a, uh, an engineering hat. And someday, if I get good enough, I would love to play electric bass in a rock and roll cover band. And I'm Michael Winslow. I am senior director at Comcast, and the fun fact about me is I still code to handle some of my management tasks. All right. All right. So this is us. This is Comcast, uh, NBC Universal. Uh, we work for Comcast, and one thing about what we do and what we've been become over the past ten years is we've gotten a lot larger with the acquisition of NBC Universal and Sky. We have so many operating companies and so many different technology stacks that we want to make sure that we as Comcast uh, handle technology in a, in, a, in a particular way and that we share so that uh, other companies that work with us, we can cross share to how we do things and they can cross share with us how they do things. All right. Thanks for that overview, Mike. Uh, so. As you might have uh, surmised from the skit that we were talking about at the beginning, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, driving technical change across organizations. And in order to do that, uh, we're going to draw parallels with the way that the railroads developed in the United States uh, through history. And so our story begins in 1834. And on this map, uh, we have highlighted in red all of the railroads that have been completed at that point in time. Uh, as you can see, a lot of these are disconnected from one another, uh, literally decoupled, um, because they're point-to-point -point or, or regional networks. 
Um, and as a result, a lot of them were really locally customized. So some railroads, for example, uh, decided to use uh, track widths or gauges that were four foot, eight and a half inches wide. That was uh, a track gauge that was commonly used in Britain at the time, and that let them use and buy British locomotives, for example. Uh, in New York, some railroads decided to go with a six foot wide gauge, even wider, uh, because they anticipated they would be so successful that they were going to need really large engines to pull all of the cargo and passengers that they were going to have on their trains. Um, this is a classic example of over-engineering. Over uh, meanwhile, down in the south, uh, a number of their railroads actually went with a five foot wide gauge. Uh, because that was more convenient for shipping cotton bales from plantations uh, out on the interior of the uh, country out towards uh, ports on the coast. And so uh, this was the, the scenario here um, at, at, at this point in time. Yeah, and the thing that struck me when you first showed this map to me and I saw all those red lines so separated from each other, it reminded me of when we had all these different groups using all these different CICD tools. Uh, here at Comcast. And just like you said, there were so many reasons to have these different gauges and these different rails for these for these areas. Well, it's not like our teams didn't have good reason to use the tools that they were using. They all did. But it really was kind of a problem having so many different technologies under one roof. Yeah. And in fact, the, the railroads ran into this once uh, those railroads grew enough that they started needing to interconnect with one another and interoperate with one another. Um, just, just as a funny side note, uh, we, we actually didn't quite have enough CICD logos to cover all of the railroads. There's, there's one that we didn't manage to cover out in Western Tennessee, um, but I'm not sure adopting yet another CICD.